Brethren, the topic before us now says contraceptive, right or wrong, evil or good. Contraceptive, right or wrong, evil or good. Brethren, this is a topic that I've been hearing many messages. I mean, receiving many messages from people. Apostle Manuel, what do you have to say about this? And I'll be telling them I don't have anything to say, but the Lord alone has something to say about it. And during the course of my waiting on the Lord, I was asking the Lord, what do you say about this very, very important issue? Many people are confused about it. Many don't know what to do. Father, what should your children do about this? Amen. And uh, I prayed. I prayed. It was pretty worse in my spirit. So during the course of Apostle Peace, ministry in the morning, today, he said to me, when he was talking about spiritual discipline, say, have you heard the answer to the question now you'll be asking? I said, sir, what is the question? He said, about con contraceptive. Have you heard about spiritual discipline now? Yes, now put your ears on the ground and begin to write. I begin to and see where you will go to and have you see what I have for you. Praise Master Jesus. So tonight, by the grace of God, not by my power, we are going to be looking into scriptures, through scriptures, you yourself, through your conscience, you will know if it is right or wrong. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Apostle, please, please, please you, you will be answering me if you are there. So, so I come again amen. with the topic contraceptive, right or wrong, evil or good. First of all, yes. let's, first of all let's check the meaning of contraceptive. The definition of contraceptive. Prevention of conception. Conception is opposite of, of um, contraception. Contraception is directly opposite of conception. We all know what conception for a woman to, to be pregnant is what we call Conception. Now, what is the definition of contraception? Prevention of conception as by use of device, drug, or chemical agent referred to as contraception. From, contra from contraception, you see contraceptive. Contraceptive are the agents that they use to prevent conception. Praise Master Jesus. Now, we have seen Hallelujah. the agent that is being used. And the Lord was telling me through the agent of the Holy Spirit, if you see all these things now that is being used here, device, drugs, chemical, chemical agents, none of them are spiritual. All are physical and carnal. So what do you say about this? This is explained further. Then, and that's okay. Go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, 5 to 9. Say, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, you see, 
everything my children are using to stop what they are talking about are physical things. None of them is spiritual. It is physically devised. Verse 7. Say, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then, they that are after the flesh cannot please God. They that are after the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh. That's why today I believe I'm talking to people who are born again. I'm not talking to the people out, out there. I'm talking to the Christians who are ready to do the will of God. I'm not being sentimental here. I'm not debating, but I'm preaching and teaching what the Lord, through the help of the Holy Spirit, tell me to teach his children. So I believe I am talking to people who are born again, who are ready to please God in everything. Praise Master Jesus. Verse 9. Uh, Say, but yeah. we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if anyone, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So, after the teaching today, you will not know if you are in the spirit or not. With the definition alone, you will know where we are going to, what the Lord is saying about it. Now, let's see the origin of childbearing. Because everything has an origin. Let's see the origin of childbearing. The Bible told us in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter number 1. And God said, verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, please get a pen and paper. You have a lot to write tonight by the grace of God. Genesis chapter 1, from 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our... Amen. And God says, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, Created he him, male and female. Created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. And what? God blessed them. And God said unto them, instruction. And God said unto them, what did God say to, say to them? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So when I got to this place, he said, my son, when I was given this instruction, I did not forget the future. I am the God that know the end from the beginning. I did not give them instruction that when a time now comes, you are tired when the whole earth is not full. When the whole earth is not full, you will not start using things to stop it. I did not go give them that instruction. I told them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. Because, because the network, I will off the listing now. I told them to replenish the earth, be fruitful, multiply. I did not give them the number of children they should multiply to. I did not tell them when they now multiply to 40, 50 children, they will now start using things to cut it down. I did not give that instruction. I said, sir, I will need further, further analogy. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to see what the Lord says about this issue right now. 
First of all, the Bible presents children as gifts from God, number one. The Bible, please write it down, the Bible presents children as gifts from the Lord. Children are the gift from the Almighty God. Babies are the gift from the Almighty God. From the beginning, God brought them forth. Now, let's see, let me just divert, uh, divert, uh, divert a little bit. Just now, Lord said to me, say, my son, just the way people are arguing about divorce at all, so it is about children. I am the God that, that instituted marriage. And I told them to be fruitful. See what my children did to Moses. Mark, he said, go to Matthew chapter 19, from verse 2. I said from verse 3 because of time. He said, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he asked for, and he answered them and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Verse 5 and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Verse 6 Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let no man put asunder. Verse 7. Listen carefully, verse 7. Verse 7. It says, They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a written of a written of divorcement and to put her away? Let's see what God, Christ has to say here. So he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardiness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. And he said to me, say, my son, this what they are also doing to my children now. Say, so the people know what is good. But to go to my children and be pressing them. Pressing them. Out of due rest, my children say, okay, it is good now without consulting me. So the way they, they press Moses in his time. And that's okay. You can be doing it. Can, uh, you can divorce and give her a written code, a written letter. So Moses now knew that it was wrong. But because of the hardiness of the heart of men, because of they, they were pressing him, he had to yield to them. So that is what is happening right now. So many of my children know that this is wrong. In the, from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, from Genesis, you read, my son, there is no way I tell them when they, a time will come and you will start using chemical, using condom, using all sorts of things to start preventing children. Let the world know, in the beginning, it was not so. My son, if I could come physically now to address this issue, the same way I address about marriage, divorce, this is the same way I will also address this. In, in, from the beginning, my father blessed them. From the beginning, I blessed them to go and multiply and replenish the earth. Say, so there's this space on, on the earth. There's this space that is not yet occupied. Is the earth now full now? I said, Daddy, it's not yet full. So what are they talking about? Tell them from the beginning, it was not so. Because of the hardiness of the heart of my children. That's why most of my children now are falling into that trap. And they cannot revise it again. They have said it already, that it is good. They cannot revise it again because of human pride. Praise Master Jesus. Now, Hallelujah. that is there for now. That marriage and children work pari passu. God is the foundation of marriage. And through marriage, children comfort. So if anything must be done about marriage and childbearing, must go back to the architect of marriage. 
must go back to the to he he who, who instituted the marriage. Now I go again, number one, write down. I go to the Bible. The Bible presents children as gifts from God. They are gifts from God. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from God. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Children are gifts from God. And only God have power over them. Only God have power over if they will come or not. We are getting there today. Please just be patient. No, but I mean Genesis 33, 4 to 5. Genesis 33, 4 to 5. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and, and Esau ran to meet him, meet Jacob, and embrace him. And fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. We all know the story. Verse 5. And he lit, and he lit up his eyes and saw the woman and the children and said, Who, he said, Who are those with thee? And Jacob said, The children with God has graciously. The children with God had graciously given thy servant. From the beginning, this is, they value the gift of God from the beginning. These are children that God have graciously given to your servant. Meaning, children are from the Lord. They come from the Lord. They are not supposed to be despised. Humanity has no power over the issue we are discussing about now. Only the owner of the children has power over them. Number two, the Bible says children are heritage from the Lord. Children are heritage from God. Psalm 127 from verse 3. Psalm 127 from verse 3. Say, Lo! Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, humanity in their own wisdom will not say, "Let us use one chemical to stop the reward of the Lord." What God has decided to bless a man from with, what God has decided to bless you with, He planned it and said, Jesus Christ, let us form another one in that womb again. And through that, this child I'm bringing forth will be so, 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 so. And because of the wickedness of a man, we now use chemical to stop what God says is bringing forth. Verse 4, I'm reading first, I mean, I mean, Psalm 127, verse 3, 4, and 5. Verse 4, and arrow, as, it, as arrow are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of their youth. Verse 5, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. Happy is the man, but today men are angry over it. I remember my, one day myself and my wife went to evangelism. A woman saw my wife. Say, ah, you gave birth. Say yes. Said the woman didn't know I was, I was at the back. Say, hey, your husband have his quiver full of them. That was her statement. Hey, your husband have his quiver full of them, which is joy to heaven. The happy is the man that. Had his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. These are the gifts of God. These are what God bless humanity with. Number three, a blessing from God. Remember, number one was children are gift from God to a heritage from the Lord. Number three, a blessing from God. 
Luke chapter 1, 41 and 42. Luke chapter 1, 41 and 42. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 42, and she spoke, she spoke, she spoke rather, out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of the womb. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of the womb. Apart from it was it was Jesus Christ that was inside that womb. As far as the Lord has blessed you with a baby in that womb, blessed are thou. That's why whenever you commit abortion, that you have killed a man of 50 years old. And if God is also blessing you with this, uh, you cut it off, you say, no, it cannot be. You are also hurt to him. The bless are thou among women, and bless is the fruit of the womb. Remember, I said the fruit of the womb is the reward from the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Number four, a crown to the age. The Bible called children a crown to the age. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Proverbs 17, verse 6. The children, children's children are the crown of old men. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Children, children are the crown of old men. And the Lord is the one that brings, brings them. Say, they are your crown. That child, you are trying to use chemical. Whatever to prevent. Say, that child is supposed to be your crown. The Lord was about to crown you. But I say, Lord, no, I don't need a crown. If, if you refuse to get God's crown on earth here, I wonder how you will get it when you get to heaven. If you refuse to allow the crown here on earth, I wonder how you will enter that heaven. When you refuse blessing on earth, I wonder the blessing you want it to bless you over there. And I pray after this teaching tonight, we all will learn wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, number five, God formed children in the womb, not man. God formed children in the womb by himself. No man had the power to form children in the womb. I'm not talking about all this one they are doing now. In the beginning, it was not so. Now, humanity in their witchcraft wisdom, in their demonic wisdom, they cannot bring dogs together and bring us together and bring uh, everything together the way they crossbreed plants and stop giving birth to monkeys, giving birth to different things. In the beginning, all oh, this was not so. This is all the, this was the end, the, the sign of the end time. Wickedness is increasing every day. People want to be like God. Humanity wants to start acting like God. And uh, we Christians, we are joining them. Today, they can say, okay, bring your spam. You bring your own gorilla, bring your own monkey, bring your own mix together and do it. They call it IVF. And at the end, they bring that one monkey out of the belly. And they call the child just to mock God. And not only that, in the wisdom of humanity now, their foolish wisdom, they cannot say, okay, man will put the sperm into a man. Man will not conceive and bring out the child. And we Christians, we are clapping, we are saying it is technology in progress. Technology in advancement. And the Lord is saying, tell my children, in the beginning it was not so. Don't join my mockers to mock me. 
My children are mocking me as others. The children of the devil are also mocking me. And I pray, after tonight, we will stop mocking God in the name of Jesus Christ. God found children Amen. in the womb. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For thou hast passed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you in your mother's womb. He formed you there. Marvelous are thy works, and that, and that my soul knoweth right well. I come again. Psalm 139, 13, and 14. Amen. It's from this place that we hope we have an opportunity. Praise the Lord. Psalm Hallelujah. 13 and 14. For, the, for thou hast passed my reins, that cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know it right well. This is an appreciation. Our brother, Brad David, know that only God had the power to form him in his mother's womb. And he rejoiced over what God had made. He rejoiced over the children that God had made. But today, we are saying, God, no, 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 no. So of all, so praise you, we better cut it down. Now, number six, God knows children before they are formed. That baby that is coming, God knows that child already. God has pre-planned that child. God says, two nations shall be in that womb. One shall be lost, one shall be this. He knows them already. As you are getting married, he knows the children is going to give to you. Now, in your own wisdom, you will say, God, no, I will use rubber to stop it. I will use this or that to cut it down. You will give account of those children you sent back to heaven on the last day. Those children you are trying to prevent, you, uh, you will give account of them on the last day. But um, as time goes on, I will tell you what we should do if you don't need them at any particular time. God knows children before their birth. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Amen. I read. Amen. Verse 4 to 5, rather. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I, I, tell is the Egyptian, I tell the Israel, I am that I am sent you. Before I form thee in thy belly, I knew thee. Before I formed thee in your mother's womb, I knew thee. Who is going to form in it? The Lord Jesus Christ. From the beginning, he formed Adam and Eve. And whenever he wanted to bring forth child, he formed the children in their womb. No wonder Adam said, The Lord has blessed me with a son, Cain. So before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comfort out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. Before I formed my daughter, altar in her mother's womb, I knew her. Before I formed Rosalind in her mother's womb, I knew her. I formed them. And uh, when you get married, if I have not formed them, let sleep by second be with your husband, it will not come. If God has not said it to form me there, it will not come. 
the Lord alone had the power to form children in the womb. A man have no power over this issue. Man have no say over this issue because from the beginning, it was left for God alone. Until this world pass away, only God has power over this very issue. God knows you, knows that child before they come forth. Before you even met with your husband on that faithful day, the Lord knows what he was about to form there. You don't know. Suddenly you see yourself, things are happening. What is this? He that formed it has formed it there. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. Galatians 1, 15. Say, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Only God had the power to, 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 to do anything in that womb. But when he pleased God, who separated me? He knows what I am coming to do. He purified me even right in my mother's womb. When he was forming me, he separated me from the world already. He knows that this one is not going to be carnal. This one is not going to come and live a useless life. I separate this one from the world of sin. Even though you make mistake, a time is coming because I've separated you, I will pick you up because I've ordained you already. When it pleases the Lord who separated me from my mother's womb, and he said to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee, I know you. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Number oh, seven. God bless barry women with children. God blesses barry women with children. He knows how to do it. He knows when to do it. He, he only had the power to do so. No man had power or right over the issue of conception, the issue of childbearing. Only God has power. It's a solemn power for him alone. Psalm 113, 7 to 9. He raised all the poor out of dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him, verse 8, that he may set him with princess, even with the princess of his people. Verse 9, he make the barren women to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. These are men of old. Hallelujah. These are men of old who know the value of what God can do. Among everything that God created, the most valuable thing God created was, was a man. And this is one thing now that is disvalued in our generation. This is what you now what God values so much. Satan is craftiness. Have now make it to be something that people now play with. People now joke over. They now form it the way they like. They can bring dog and this is what they say it's human being now. And this is what God values so much. And this is the reason why Christ had to come and die. Because he know the pain it took him to form you and I. But today, humanity in their wisdom are playing with what God is not joking with. Genesis chapter 21. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, we move further. Call time. Okay, Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 3 to 3. Genesis chapter 21, 1 to 3. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son, his old age, at the set time of which God has spoken to him. 
Let's see. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him. Who said that? Who said that born to him? Isaac. Only God could do it. Only God could, in their old age, God still did it. Now, let's go to number eight. Who owed, who not all the power to open womb and shut it? Number eight. Who all the power to open the womb or shut it? Genesis chapter 29, 28 to 23. Do you want, now maybe you have 100 children. You are saying, God, hey, what do I do? There's a man who, who all the power to say, okay, I see reason with you. You go to him in prayer. Say, I see reason with you. He had the power to know what to do at his will. Now, Genesis 29, 28 to 33. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife. Also, verse 29, and Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, Beha, his handmaid, to be her maid. Verse 30. Verse 30. And, and he went in also unto Rachel. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah. And served him yet seven other years. Verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. The Lord has power to stop it and to open it. The Lord had the power to see reason with you. Say, so, okay, I understand what you are saying. Okay, you need time to, to do my work. You need time to do this, to do that. Okay, are you saying there will be too much? You don't have the resources. If it pleases him, it will unleash resources upon you if that child must come through you. It will open the door of riches for you to trade them. If money is your problem. Okay, maybe you want to do the work of God. At least two, three, four are okay so that I will be able to, to do it. It will say it can sh shut the womb of your wife for a season or permanently as the case may be. As we are just see here now. And when he saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Who did that? God. He only had the power to be called upon. He opened her womb and Rachel was barren. Verse 32. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his, his name Reuben. For he said, not for she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction, the Lord alone. In the order that they let to give glory to God, especially when it comes to the issue of childbearing. Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Praise Master Jesus. Verse 33. Amen. Amen. This is a sponsor that will know the, you are here, people are hearing me. Amen. Verse 33. Amen. Yes, sir. And she conceived again and bear a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I was hated. Can't you understand? Because yes, the Lord have heard I was hated. Who owns the power, sisters and brothers? God. It's God. He had the power to shut and to open. That's why we, we do see that song that says, What well, God, who God has blessed, let nobody curse. The door that God has opened, let nobody no close. Man. close it. Yeah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she conceived again and bear a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I was hated. The Lord will hear you. If only Amen. I said, Daddy. Look, look, say, come and let us raise it together. 
Exodus 1 verse 18. Come and let us eat God. He hears prayer. Let us not start going for chemical. Let us not be carnal. We have today, we have carnal Christians. People who don't know God anymore. But we pretend to not to see we know God. But we are putting him away and do things the way we look, the way we like. It's not supposed to be so. Say God heard that I was hated. He had therefore given me this son also, and she called his name Simeon. God answers prayer, no matter what you are going through. First Samuel chapter one. From one to two. First Samuel chapter one, from one to two. No, we are we are in the sub in the subtitle that says, Who owns the power to open and to shut womb? I read from first Samuel chapter one down. Now there was a certain man of Ramatha Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Akana, the son of Jeruham, the son of Elihu the son of Tahu, the son of Zeph, and Ephratite. Verse 2. I, I had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Panina. And Panina had children, but Hannah had no children. Verse 3. And this man, this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord, of those in Shiloh, and the two sons of Eli, Hepni and Phinehas, the, the priests of the Lord, were there. Verse 4. And when the time was that word that Elkanah offered, offered, he gave to Paninah his wife and to all his sons and her daughters portions. Verse 5. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord has shot who? Ha, boom. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Number five. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. He owed the power. Verse seven. And as he did so yearly by year, when she was up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she went Sorry, verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her also for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. Because the Lord, not daughter, not chemical, not one thing, because the Lord has done so. Verse 7. And he did so yearly by year when she when she went to when she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore, she wept. I did not eat. Yes, ate. Then said, I cannot, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weep thou? And why eat thou not? And why is that heart grieved? Am, not, am I not better? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Yes, nine. So Hannah rose up after they have eaten in Shiloh and after they have drunk. Now, early the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She did not go and look for HIV. I call it HIV. And people call it IVF. He did not go and look for IVF somewhere. No matter the pain, no matter the travail, she ran to God. I love the Christians of old. I love the men. They know what to do at every given time. While they are born again, they are born again. When they say God is you, God is you. No matter what they do, they will always run to God. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. You can do so today. You can go to the praise of the Lord say, Father, this is what I need. He's a, he's a caring daddy. He knows what to do. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look unto the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto the handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto thee, unto the Lord, all the days of his life. 
and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, verse 21, 12, 12 rather, and it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Ellie marked her mouth. Verse 13, now, Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Ellie thought she had been drunken. Verse 14, but Ellie said unto her, how long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. Verse 15, and Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have, I have drunk in the when not strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. This is the laziness of men today. We don't want to do this. We want to, we want to do it artificial. When you don't want to give the 10 euro, 100 euro, and they cut the wood away, or they form one, they join a mango tree, mango uh, water, and all together put there and give it to give it to dog. That will not be upon you, Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 16. Verse 16 Cut not thy handmaid for a daughter of Baliel. For out of the abundance of my couplings and grief have I spoken it to. Verse 17. Then Ellie answered and said, Go in peace, and God of Israel grant thee thy portion that thou hast asked of him. Verse 18. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in the sight. So the woman went her way and did it, and he continues, and rather her continuous was no more sad. Verse 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Ekina knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. The Lord. At Ekinam only knew her, but she had been meeting her. I mean, he had been meeting her for long, for years. In it never happened because God shut it. But now, after she had prayed, the Bible said the Lord remembered her. Therefore, it came to pass when the time was come, uh, but after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, "Because I have." Ask him of the Lord. Man. I've asked him of the Lord. Only the Lord can do so. He shut the womb. He opened the womb. If he decides to give you 10 children, he say, Lord, because go to him. He knows what to do. He is a wise, he's a wise God. He is a master planner. From the beginning, he has been God. He knows the end from the beginning. You have no say over this. Doctors have no say over this. Apostle and mother have no say over this. Pastors have no say over this. But because of the wickedness of men, there are presence of pastors to hell against God now. Because of the wickedness of the heart of humanity, they know what is good in their conscience. Their conscience know this is evil. But they are putting some men and women of God into sin. God forgive them all. But you, the Bible says, temptation will surely come. But woe unto the man through which temptation come. Hmm. You might be just now. So, so women are falling. So, so women are falling. You make a him for God know how to bring him up again. God knows what to do. But I pity you. You that know the right to do. You are pressing a man of God. Every day, the same thing. One day, you'll be tired and say, okay, do it. It's right then. Let me say the cause of people. This one, everybody asks the question. And he knows, or she knows, that this is what they actually needed. Just as Moses said, okay, no problem. I'm tired of you people. Go and start divorcing and start writing letters. Uh, people start divorcing your wife. Today you marry. Tomorrow, right, because you can read that right. Tomorrow, you write another one. Take, go away. I marry that one. Write again. Go away. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He came and said, no. In the beginning, it was not so. The same Christ is speaking to a man now. Concerning this 
conception that we are talking about now. He have come again using his, his little boy to tell you that in the beginning, contraception was not there. Praise Master Jesus. Now, Hallelujah. Number nine. Hallelujah. Number nine. Who do you call when you need or don't need children? Who do you call when you need or don't need children? You may have um, reason not to say, okay, I don't need children now. Just as some people are killing themselves to have that child, you're all oh, saying, I don't need more anymore. So, you don't need any more, where do you go? I need now, Lord, where do you go? We are, we are, we are, we are being coming with scenes with scriptures. Um, if a word is enough for the wise, Genesis chapter 25, verse 1 says, Genesis chapter 25, verse 1 says, the, um, Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca's wife conceived. Who do we go to? Not IVF. Not daughters. Isaac went to the source of children. He that all the power to bring children. They were daughters in those days, but he never went to them. He went to the Lord. He entreated of the Lord for his wife. And the Lord was entreated, and the Lord blessed Rebecca with a child. So, who do we go to? Not Codon. Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 25, 21. Not Codon. Not a uh, uh, chemical, not the uh, all those things, not contraceptives. We have a God who have the power to give or to say, okay, it's enough this way. Now, number 10. What did the Bible say? I'm closing now. What did the Bible say? Hebrews 11, verse 11. The true faith also said that herself. Received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she was because she judged him, him faithful who had promised her. Faith because of our faithlessness, our faith now is not on daughters, our faith now is not on people who don't know God. We are not making men our God, but Abraham and the wife knew God. They put their faith in God, and at the point of life, at the right time, the Lord blessed them. The Bible says He did not judge him wrong; He judged God faithful. But today we are judging God wrong. We are not judging God now. If God could do it, I will not go to the doctor. Since God cannot do it anymore, let me go and look for a sperm of a of three, three years old child. Oh, I don't know. Or I go to a polytechnic and buy one to a, a man, give me sperm, miss another sperm to another sperm, and eject it because of your faithlessness. Because you don't regard God again for anything. If you disregard God for children, is it car to buy car now you don't, you don't know him? To get job, you never got him. The one from the beginning he formed, you are you disregard him. You went to a man to start pumping you with different things, different chemical. Is it when you want to buy a car? You say God come on the last day, we shall see. Romans 12 verse 2. Please get this very well. Romans 12 verse 2 says, uh, do not be conformed to this world. Children of God, this is my closing remark. Uh, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that is good 
an acceptable and perfect will of God. But today, many of us have been interwoven with the world. We are not doing as people of the world. People of the world are running to daughters to help them, to cut it off or to do one thing. We, the children of the Most High, we, but say he that is from above is above all. We are still joining them to do the same thing. And we are saying the Lord will come and rapture us. What where is it? you will not rapture anywhere. You will join your classmates, the people of the world. I come again. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind and prove that which is acceptable and prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Brother, sisters, I am not here to debate. I am not here to support or say I don't support. God he said to me, I will forgive my children. But woe unto those who are pressing my children to do what they are not supposed to do. Now you have heard it. And he said, now, it was a vision, and one angel came and told me, this is Bablika. The way he taught me is what I'm bringing up now. Be blessed, go back home, and know what you should do. Share this message to everyone all over the world. I believe those who have the Spirit of God will hear this and know what to do. This we answer the questions of so many people who are not carnal, who are not serving man, who are actually serving God and fear God. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a blessed hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Please, um, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 minutes. If you have any questions to ask, please do. In the next 15 minutes. In regard to this topic. Don't go to the topic of uh, how, how do I sit with my wife? Don't, I, don't, I don't answer those, those pieces now. <laughs> the, the topic again says contraceptive, right or wrong, evil or good. Now, I do not say now it's right or wrong. Your conscience have told you if it's right or wrong. The Bible have told you now what to say about it. But my one is that it is very, 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 very wrong. Because from the beginning, it was not so. I will ever <coughs> that is in your life. That was not so from the beginning. The Lord will take them away today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have answered the questions of so many people all over the world. Tonight, the Lord is also answering your question that puzzle in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Anything the devil have trickly been into your life that was not so when the Lord was forming you, the Lord is taking it away right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. It is well understood. There is no question. Lord, may your name be alone. Be exalted forever in Jesus' name. Amen. If you know you are, you are not born again. Remember, this message is preached to those who are Christians who are born again. Those are those are there. They do whatever they like because they are carnal, because they are living their life anyhow. But if you want to join. The, the people the Lord is governing. You come out now and say this word after me. Come out now. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I've heard your word tonight. I've seen how loving it is to be your children. Father, I've come tonight to say I am sorry of all the life I have been living. Planning for myself, living for myself, directing myself. Now I know that from the beginning it was not so for me. I repent of all my sin today. Wash me clean with your blood. Purge me, O oh Lord. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Please take my name away from the book of death and write it in the book of life. I am born again today. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Brother, sister, if you have declared the tradition, I rejoice with you. The heaven of God, the third heaven, they are rejoicing now because you have surrendered. The joy in heaven is so great now. And I pray the Lord will strengthen you, will empower you. Amen. The grace to run straight to the end. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 To join the people of God, you will never fall back again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And this joy that heaven shared today will be more on the last day when you shall enter his kingdom with us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Oh, oh then this half hour, good night. I believe we are blessed. I'm blessed by myself when he was teaching me. My heart was joyful. I believe many hearts tonight are joyful. And I pray the joy with the man till we get to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're gonna pray for some men of God who like, like Moses, that the people are pushed to sin. They are pushed them to sin. Now, now they know it's wrong, but they cannot come out and tell the people what I said today was wrong. We say, Father, please have mercy upon those men of God and give them the mind to do the right thing. Those women of God and those people who also know what to do. Uh, they are not doing it. Let me say, he that know what to do and uh, doing it not is a sin. Father, forgive them too. And help them to always cry to you whenever they are in difficulties. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we want to pray. Pray for yourself as a father. We see what Hannah did. We see what Isaac did. We see all of them we have done today. They all went to the Lord. Now God knew what to do. We are seeing that it's only God that has the power to shut the womb and to open it. And so, only God, if you go to him, he knows what to do. Say, Father, always 
give me the mind to always know what to do to come to you in every situation. Mm. Not only childbearing. Father, give me the grace, the spirit to always know to come to you in everything because I am your daughter, I am your son. In the name of Jesus Christ, open with a prayer. Father God, my father, that was wisdom. That was the fear. That fear of the Lord. Is always the Lord. Not to you, I always want to do you have the power over our lives, Lord. We need to know we need anything to do the Lord. We have to do the right thing. Thank you.